Good evening. This is CTV News for Tuesday, March the 19th. I'm Sonia Shavaspa. And I'm Patricia Valone. Glad to have you with us tonight. Well, mandatory water restrictions are in place in Montgomery and Prince George's counties following a massive water main break on Connecticut Avenue in Chevy Chase. The break occurred around 8 Monday evening and resulted in a geyser shooting approximately 30 feet into the air. The Washington Suburban Sanitary Commission is calling on all customers to use water only as necessary, take shorter showers and turn off faucets after washing hands and brushing teeth, limit flushing toilets and using dishwaters, dishwater washers and put off washing clothes. Violators can face up to a $500 fine. A Glen Arden man killed in yesterday's fiery crash in Landover is identified. 70-year-old Rodwell McNeil was killed in a single car crash about 12.40 p.m. when his vehicle traveling westbound on MLK Highway near Whitfield Chapel Road hit a guardrail. The SUV caught fire while McNeil was trapped inside. Three Prince George's police officers tried to rescue him. One of the officers, Lieutenant John Bozeman, a 21-year veteran of the department, was taken to the hospital with burns to his face and hands. Bozeman was discharged late this afternoon. Police are still investigating the incident, but say speed does not appear, does appear rather, to be a factor in the crash. Anyone with information about the case is asked to call the Collision Analysis Reconstruction Unit. That number is 301-731-4422. Meanwhile, police arrested a 33-year-old district man for a domestic-related murder in Suitland yesterday. Keith Henry allegedly stabbed 33-year-old Katisha Jenkins multiple times inside her home around 8.30 a.m. in the 5200 block of Morris Drive. Jenkins later died at an area hospital. Henry fled the scene but was located a short time later in northwest Washington. He faces charges of first and second degree murder. Police encourage anyone who may be experiencing domestic violence to contact the Family Crisis Center at 301-731-1203 or by logging on to familycrisiscenter-pgco.org. Well, a Prince George's school, school board member is reacting after County Executive Rashern Baker announces his plans to take control of the school system. Under the proposal, Baker would be in charge of picking the superintendent and the board's billion-dollar budget. He is now seeking legislation in Annapolis that would allow for charge for the changes. The board met yesterday in an executive session to find a way to block the measure. We spoke with District 4 member Patricia Eubanks for her reaction. Do you guys think that you were on the right road to making progress? Oh, definitely we're on the right road. That's one thing that bothers me as a citizen of Prince George's County, um, in the state of Maryland, and especially Prince George's County, is highly regarded everywhere else in the U.S. but here. And that, that bothers me. That bothers me that we have no respect for the gains we've made at home. So that, that bothers me just as a, as a citizen. It has nothing to do with a, with a board member, how we have such self-hate in this county. So, would you, would you remain on the board under uh, the other system that um, the county executive is proposing? I'll remain on the board until my time on the board is up until my time on the, you know, on the inside when I felt that I can't make a difference and make a change and fight for families and communities and be that voice for the parents who won't speak up for their kids. When I personally feel my time is up for that, then I'll leave. And just lastly, did this surprise you? No. No. Nothing surprises me in Prince George's County, especially when the next year is an election year. A spokesman for the school district also issued a statement calling Baker's plan, quote, bad. The statement also says the county executive should focus on improving parent engagement and attracting teachers to the county to help improve the education system. 
A hearing is scheduled tomorrow in the case of a former police officer who is seeking a new trial. Keith Washington is currently behind bars, serving 45 years for shooting Brandon Clark and wounding Robert White. You may recall the shooting happened when the two men were delivering furniture to Washington's Akakee home in 2007. Washington also wants his original sentence reduced and a review by a three-judge panel. He was convicted in 2008 of involuntary manslaughter, two counts of first-degree assault and two counts of using a handgun.